Darren Oliver was your captain? Yep. What, what, what was he like? Uh, he, he played the game hard. Darren Oliver, yeah. he played the game hard. He was a De- real Define captain. hard, because today's hard is, is, is yeah. a different hard to... Well, you, with, you think about the only person that probably actually believed that we were going to genuinely win that game on that Sunday was Darren. Yeah. So he played yeah. the game to a point where... Until you pass this, I'm going to push the opposition to every inch. Every run yep. they get, they are going to have to earn it. Um, yep. And his preparation for all his teammates was... He prepared us for battle Yeah, back then. Um, I, I remember of, uh, on a numerous times, um, not in this game, but just over the, over the year, that he would stop the game because the opposition player... Shirt wasn't tucked in, <laughs> stuff like that. That kind of stuff. It just yep. Everyone would come to. Oh, I see where Hazy gets it from. Uh, I think he. I think he made some bloke run off and change his shirt one one game. Oh. He didn't have the proper proper club shirt on, and he stopped the game. He made him go off and, and put a proper cold. You know, that's club a power shirt move on. and a half. I love it. Do you remember the bowler called Kane Hallinan? I do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right arm quick. Right arm quick, and he was genuinely like he played in our third eleven in the in the grand final, third eleven grand final back then. He did, and he would be he would open the bowling our ones right now. He he was genuinely quick, and I remember yep. he he hit somebody on the head. He bounced the bloke, didn't have his helmet on, um, and Do sort of said, "Mate, you, you can wear helmets. You wear a helmet, <laughs> um, you know." And he sort of complained, you know, the batsman and. He's just gone to Kane and said, look, just bowl another short one. Let's just see what happens. And he's bowled the same ball and he's hit him in the head again. Um, you know, it was just a case he played the game on the edge. Um, yeah. you know, back then, they went occasionally went across the line, but it's always just... He was one of those captains too where it was just before tea time and, you know, he'd come out of first slip and he'd put himself at silly mid on or silly mid off, no helmet, no box. He's basically on the pitch, you know, just... In the mm-hmm. batsman's face, he was one of those type. I think I think uh, I've just learned when where Hazy gets his captaincy style from. Yeah. I think I told Hazy <laughs> that. I go, I know who you're, you're modelling your captaincy on. Yeah, he's. And I reckon it's Dio. But do you remember just the, like, but he he opened the batting in a pretty good era, and he didn't wear a thigh pad, didn't wear a helmet. No. no. He just had his sweat. He had a sweatband on a red sweatband. He did. And he had his, his watch. Had his, his watch, watch underneath when he batted. Yeah. Right, and it was like, what's the time? What's the watch for? <laughs> the, time. the way he trained was just ruthless. Like <clears throat> we we would train till nine o'clock at night. Wow! You know, catches running, you know, two hundred meter sprints and the hill I runs. I still remember the hill runs. Do you remember? <laughs> well, um, me and Hazy actually Hobbs, Greg Hobber. He sent me and Hazy in one night. He goes, yeah, that's right. Fin- finish off, get changed. Well, beautiful. So we went in. No worries, we've just got to go in. It was a Thursday night. Do's walked in and seen us. He goes, what are you doing? So Hobbs said, he goes, nah, he took us out onto the ground. He belted cricket balls at us for about half an hour. He was belting them at us. We were like, yeah, he's, I'm never going in early again. It was good, yeah, though. It was, was good. He got the best out of you. The combination yeah. I had when I first started was, was Molly was coach. And Molly was probably harder, harder coach than D.O. But you put them both together and it was just preparation for battle. It was yeah. we, yeah, like Matty said, we'd, we'd hit, Molly be hitting catches at us from eight, ten metres away and he'd be murdering balls at us. Um, 8.30 at night, lighting wasn't great, hands were sore, we just got to get going. Um, you know, so I still remember one time when I, I rocked up and I think I was about 15 and Molly saw me blue shorts on. Um, and at the time with the clothing etiquette wasn't overly huge. Nah. Um, and he's pinged me for it. And I had my pads on and Molly's just gone hazy. We're, we're, we're red, mate. Go run out six laps with your pads on, leave them on and do six laps for me. That, that was the punishment. So six laps back then for a 15 year old. You cop it on the chin, but it's like, <laughs> hey, this, bloke, this bloke's serious. Man. Yeah. Last yeah. time I wore blue shorts, mate, the training ever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so in your time, if you can let me know who, who, you're, who do you think was the best bowler that you kept to? Oh, best bowler I kept to down at Preston. Mm. Oh, that's tough. That's tough. Um, 
Yeah, what, what, what do you mean by that question? You had the easiest job of any player <laughs> that's ever Who's played that? the game. You kept. How good was the attack that you got to yeah. keep to? Well, I mean, you kept Stuart Hensley, Steve Malloy, Kevin Lowe, Tim Jessel, Aaron Weir, Gam Pereira, um, just to name a few. Just, yeah, I, it's... I, you got to choose one, think, mate. you got to choose one. I think the most enjoyable to keep to, actually, he was probably the quick, quick one of the quickest I kept to, but Stewie Hensley, he just used to hit a seam and he would never make me work down leg, Stewie Hensley. He'd just be bowling <laughs> that off line, you know, off stump line. Um, and he would always get something off the deck. You'd always get a little nibble. You'd always get a catch nice and early. Um, you know, Steve Moore, he was a great bowl too because he, he could just swing in both ways. He was just unplayable. Uh, uh, so many good bowls, but I, I did enjoy um, keeping the to Stewie, I reckon. I enjoyed that. Um, yep. Nicky? Um, Best bowler well, obviously, with. obviously, Jace Fairbrother just comes to mind just with that spally bowl was yep. um, unforgettable. But um, probably one player who I thought had we didn't see enough of and we didn't get him for long enough was a bloke by name Mario Villaverine. He was good. Yes, he was. He, um, he had the he bowled some serious pace. I think he might have played um, a couple of games for Sri Lanka, actually. Yeah, I think he might have played a few games there. Um, he, he, I didn't get to play enough with Gamney. Um, but probably even the, the Sean Brown as a batsman at the club was just as good as anyone we saw. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Not to forget Kevin Lowe. Um, he's brilliant. Um, yep. So they're probably the players that, um, for me, um, spring to my mind quite a lot when you know, talking batting and bowling. Um, Best yeah, batsman? So. Oh, yeah. Like Hazy was saying, Brownie was really good. Um, da- Daisy, when he, was on, when he was on, was really good. You opened the batting with Daisy, didn't you? A few times. Great what was character. That? What was that Great. like? What was that like walking out with, uh, you know, I don't know, I don't know much about, about Daisy. I hear a lot about him, but I don't know much about him as a person. Um, just the jokester. Just always just telling jokes out there and just moping around. He was, he was like, it was a character. It's hard to explain what it was like batting with him. Whoever batted with him would know exactly what I'm talking about. He was just... He always looked down in the dumps. He was just slouching around. <laughs> oh, I don't want to be here. I hate cricket. I want to get pissed. That's how he used to talk. But as a, oh, that grand final year, I think he got 500 plus runs and made team of the year. So wow. he, he was a good batsman. Um, yep. Lowell was a good batsman. <clears throat> Brad Whitefield, Hobbs, um, <clears throat> Am Bam. Uh, just, yeah. There was a lot of good, lot of good batsmen we played with back then. A lot of I, remember, I remember when I came down, I was playing threes and that year, and it was Preston one played the grand final. We're in the grand final against Ivano. Um, I think we bowled him out for maybe 115 or something. Um, Daisy opened the batting. Um, Sean Ayres was opening the bowling for Ivano. Um, he bowled genuine pace, like. From the side, from Preston to Dover, everyone looks just quicker. But when you put the keeper back where he was you know, 15, 20 metres back, he was a long way back. Daisy's come out. He's, he's got his, just his red baggy red hat on. And he was playing cut shots and pull shots. It was probably the best innings I ever, ever watched. Um, obviously, yeah. he wasn't playing in it. But watching that innings, he, he got 50-odd. But the innings he played, I reckon Kevin Lowe would say this, that was the best innings ever seen and we won the grand final that night, Preston won the grand final that night Ivano um, said they're not coming back the next day they gave up um, and it was a surprise to all of us because we thought we were just going to go on And I think they I didn't come back the next day, this is the first 11 final they didn't come back the next day they, didn't, they said to the umpires we're not coming back tomorrow um, wow yeah, yeah so it was, it was game over and the celebrations from was on the Saturday night started, and then the next yeah. day you came back, and you <laughs> on a Sunday it's Mad Sunday, and you know it was it was a that was that was the best innings I ever watched. If you remember Duncan Smith, maybe. yes, yes, remember great, him in the second. He used to love playing the cut shot. No, he just used to slap the ball. Yep. He, he like Hardy used to rock up about two o'clock, and he used to always just come by and say. Duncan Smith had opened the batting. He'd be still still out there. And he'd look up to us and he'd go, what's Smitty on? The score would be on 110. And Duncan would be on about 75, 80. Yeah. Yeah. D.O. would be down the other end just noodling him away. And 
But Duncan Smith, he used to play indoor cricket for Victoria. And he used to just murder the ball. Yeah. Um, and that's why he was good at the, uh, the good cut shot and late cut. He used to play a lot. Just that yeah. indoor cricket shot, you know, down into the net. Yeah. But, yeah, he was yeah. good to watch, actually. Yeah. I would have uh, liked to have seen Gam Pereira. I only played a handful of games with him. But from all reports, some of the innings he played were pretty special. I only yep. got one game with Gamini and it was, um, he made 63 and it was, a, it was very good to watch. Good fun. There was a game where, um, and I'm reliably told from a reliable source, that, that Michael um, robbed you of a century. Apparently, yeah, I don't know the full story, um, but apparently you weren't very happy with him for, for a while there. Um, did, did, if it's the game I'm thinking, did you run yourself out? Yes. 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 I, was, I, I think I made 17 not out, but <laughs> it, was, it was at Noble Park, I'm pretty sure. It was at Noble Park. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> Spot we were on. in a bit of strife, and I think, yeah, me, me and I think, I think 17 not think, outs a justifiable number to say that, that no, mix. No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was batting all right. 100. I was batting all right. I think we put on, we put on a few, actually. Yeah, they, um, I don't know if you remember the infamous hat trick. Remember the hat trick to the uh, Noble Park, yeah. Park Qu- Link spin? Quigs. 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 He patted it up to the Roman. Yeah, they said, watch, watch his wrong. And he goes, oh, I've got it covered. And he patted up. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> wasn't, a yeah. Smart, wasn't, wasn't a smart man, the old Quigs. But um, I think we put on about, I don't know, 70 or 80. And, yeah. Um, I still remember, Matty, just the, at the tea break, goes, mate, you've robbed me of 100. <laughs> you've robbed me of 100. I said, mate, you're on, you're on 17. We were feeling good. I was feeling good, actually. Yes, I was, was on the way. I was on the way to 100. <laughs> there was plenty of, plenty of time left, it you know, in the day. Phenomenal. So, so you, you, you've both been around the club for a I long time. Yeah. Maddie, Maddie you, you, you find yourself down filling in. Um, I got the, the luxury of playing with you last year um, and you doing a calf. Um, yes. <laughs> I haven't seen, haven't seen you since. Um, but, but um, you know, I got, I got, to be honest, I got to see your class and I got to see your ability. Your dad talks you up, you know, like till he's blue in the face. Um, yeah, you got to stop that. But I never, uh, I never actually got to see it and I could actually see that day how good you, how good you must have been. Um, Michael, obviously, you're still heavily involved at the club. Um, where do you see the club now from where it was? What, what's, the, what's, the, what's the key differences between now... Matty, I'll, I'll ask you um, because you get to you get to kind of see the club grow from a, from afar um, yep. and progress from afar. What what, what have you noticed um, from back when I was playing to sort of now when I've popped in? Yeah, um, yeah. I'll probably just uh, how professional it's come. I think um, just when I come down and did those couple of preseason trainings, un, you know, under you and just the way it was run at the centre um, that that changed so much since when I played where you just, you know, back in the day, you'd just come, you'd have your bat, people would bowl, you might do a 20 minute field and that was it. Mm. But now it's, you know, there's a lot more preparation that goes into it. Batsmen who, who are batsmen bat all night, bowls, bowl, all rounders do their thing. Yeah. So that's the big change for me, what I've noticed over the years down there. So, and you know, there's a lot of good young kids coming through too, I think. So I don't think we're we're too far away, Preston, from you know climbing back up the ladder and, and playing regular finals. I reckon. Nikki, what are your thoughts? Yeah, look, yeah. it's obviously um, <clears throat> changed a lot over the two decades um, since we played. Um, it was a reliance on genuine talent. Talent won flags back then, and who had the most talent, and we were sort of lucky. We played in. The first 11 were, had star players, you know, that's what sort of built the success. And I think over the years, um, it's sort of, we've lost those, that, that, those, that talent. We've lost the talent of players to the real match winning players to win first 11 games. But I think now it's come to more of a, a development, the real development through the grades and preparing players for first 11. Back then it was, there was more preparation, but to compare to what it is now, I think it's just a matter of actual players really sticking together and sticking fat to the club. You know, you've got to build off the field um, and then on the field comes with that. You need those real first-class players and A-grade players to really, not carry a side, but win the games for you. We had probably throughout the whole grades, there was seven or eight players playing in 
the grades that they were match winners in. From a long-term perspective, the club is is not far away from that. Um, you know, we're, we're really developing the club based in terms of going to district cricket then coming back um, and hopefully, you know, the, the Aaron Crisps and, you know, Jack Rudd's, you know, one day come back to us and when they do, it's, it's that's they're the match winners. <clears throat> you know, yeah, so absolutely. Um, even this year, I don't think we're far away. Oh, no, I think we're very close. I think we're very close. Um, but you're right, it's about the consistency of list and, and trying to keep the keep the guys together and, and the more the more cricket you play together, the more likely you're going to have success. Um, 1860 Club. Um, this will be my um, final question for you guys. 1860 Club. Um, you know, b- apart from the, the days where there was a social club, um, which I'm not entirely sure when that actually finished up. I'm pretty sure it finished up around the, when the, the new function centre was built. Now, obviously, with Lee, Martin, um, Weary, um, doing a lot of work to get the 1860 Club. When, when you heard about it, what, was your, what were your thoughts on the 1860 Club? Oh, it was a great idea. You know, there hasn't been a lot of that down there where you get to go somewhere and catch up with a lot of people. I think the last couple of years on the cash draw, um, they've started to do a bit of a reunion and that. So I think it will be good for the club to get a few old heads back there. A bit of extra support down there on a, on a Saturday as well, watching the, the ones or twos or threes or fours, whoever, whoever it may be. So, no, nah, really, really good idea. I'm really looking forward to coming down there and uh, supporting the Bullants again. Yeah, great great initiative um, by the club. Uh, my thing is, it's obviously we know about mental health nowadays, and it's one of the things is um, to get guys from the 60s and 70s and 80s, you know, to just to catch up and just have a drink together. Um, for those people to that may not have seen one another for quite some time, and for the new players to hear stories and listen to the, those older stories, it's, it's great. It's great to listen to. It's great to to hear about that and to have like a 1860 where it's a club. Um, yeah, you, it's a bit of a belonging, I suppose. And mm. you, you think about the past and how good those times were. Mm. Um, yeah, just thinking back myself when I was a kid, um, you know, 14, 15, starting out at Preston and you know, reeling off the names with Maddie, and it'd be great to be able to catch up with those players and obviously, you know, see players previous to that as well um you know and last year i think was a great with the the cash draw seeing those yeah. older heads floating around the club um you know so I, I think it's just fantastic and i can't wait to to sort of be a part of it i've been to the club now since 97 so it's it's a long time and you know i've got my young fella now and he's you know he can't wait to to be a part of preston as well so it's a the generations um I can't, I can't wait for it. So, so it's a real great initiative. And, and Lee and the, the troops who are doing it, fantastic start so far. Um, um, well said, I think. I think it's um, yeah. an incredibly important way to, to keep connected to, to a club of, of Preston size and history. And I mean, I've, I've only just been really paying attention to the history since the 1860 club started. So it's it's been, um, you know, having a conversation with Dick Norris last week. There's a whole plethora of stories uh, that can be told, that, that should be told, that, that need to be shared. And, um, you know, I think the 1860s club is going to be fantastic. Um, thanks, boys. Um, no worries, man. Th- th- thanks for your right. time.